Many players have graced the diamond, but very few have had a lasting impact on Major League Baseball like Daryl Strawberry. With his catchy name, imposing and intimidating physique, mind-blowing talent and swing, all topped with a very busy and controversial lifestyle, this is a tale detailing how Daryl Strawberry shook the MLB world. Before the drama, before the fame, before the big name, there was a little boy with a dream. But this dream almost didn't find expression due to the numerous hardships and difficulties on the way. Little did anyone know it was the forging of an all-time great, Bitter Strawberry, the difficult early years. When Daryl Eugene Strawberry was born in Los Angeles on March 12, 1962, as the third son of Henry and Ruby Strawberry and two younger sisters, it was like any other day. But Daryl's childhood was going to be anything but ordinary. It was filled with hardships you'll only read of in dark-themed novels. In the 1970s, the Strawberries resided in a modest house in the Crenshaw neighborhood of South Central LA. Daryl's father, Henry, held a steady job as a postal clerk, but battled personal demons that deeply affected the family. He'd come home in drunken rages, subjecting his wife, Ruby, Daryl, and his older brother, Ronnie, to physical abuse. Daryl became so scared of his father until that one night when he he was about 10 years old. The night, it all ended. On this night, Henry had come home drunk and proceeded to physically hurt his wife, as usual. Only this night, the police stepped in, and Henry was kicked out, leaving their lives forever, or so they thought. He would later resurface when Daryl's incredible baseball skills took him to the top of his class draft pick in 1980. Almost a cliche story, seeing an abusive or absent father return to the success of a child. Here's the crazy part, though. Despite the chaos caused by Henry, he did instill a love for sports and athleticism in his youngest son. Daryl often and watched his father play softball at the nearby park, where Henry's pitching and hitting skills left a lasting impression. When his father disappeared from his life, sports became Daryl's escape and sanctuary. He excelled in various sports, including baseball, basketball, and football. Playing provided a temporary solace from his anger and troubles, and his mother, Ruby, dedicated her family and working full-time at a local telephone company supported Daryl's baseball passion, recognizing the happiness it brought him. His sports skills gave glimpses of a bright future, but Daryl's educational journey wasn't as promising. It was a wild ride that saw him go through different junior high schools before ending up at Crenshaw High School, where everything came together. Crenshaw was famous for its sports skills, attracting scouts on the lookout for young talent. Although Daryl loved basketball, with his tall and lean frame making him a natural on the hardwood, he found love on the baseball diamond, and the game showed him equal love. Daryl had it all, pitching, hitting home runs, stealing bases, and feeling Building like a champ. From a young age, he didn't overthink his game, he just went out there and rocked it. For veteran baseball fans, how tall and intimidating Daryl was as a player isn't news, but if you didn't get to witness him play at his peak, then here's some context. When Daryl started 10th grade at Crenshaw High, he was already six foot three. Damn. Sure, he had some hitches in his earlier high school years, but with his high school coach, Brooks Hurst, supporting and pushing him to be disciplined and more professional, it all worked out just fine. From a tough childhood to becoming an indisputable generational talent, Daryl Strawberry has come a long way, and eventually, the dream of every kid who picks up a baseball bat became a reality. How easy was it going to be? Sweet Strawberry, the first steps to stardom. The 1980 MLB draft came, and the New York Mets snagged him up as the first overall draft pick, hoping he'd be the spark their franchise needed. But Strawberry wasn't just a ball player, he was a box office sensation waiting to happen, and everyone knew it. So the Mets sweetened the deal with a mouth-watering $200,000 signing bonus and whisked him off to the Big Apple for a press introduction. But before he could rock the Mets uniform at Shea Stadium, he had to prove himself in the minor leagues. So he headed out to Kingsport, Tennessee, not exactly the bright lights of Manhattan 
or the glitz of Hollywood, but home to the Mets' rookie-level Appalachian League team. It was Strawberry's first taste of the Mets' farm system, and in that season, he swung for the fences with a .268 batting average and smacked five home runs. But there were whispers about his work ethic being a bit sloppy and his tardiness, and those bad habits seemed to get a hold of him the following season as he played 123 games for the high A Lynchburg, but only knocked out 13 homers and had a 255 batting average. But a tiny bump was all it was going to be for Daryl. He kept climbing that farm system ladder, getting into the double A with the Jackson Mets. 145 strikeouts, 97 runs, and an impressive 34 homers for the Jackson Mets, plus a winter spent playing in Caracas, Venezuela, and some time with the triple A Tidewater Tides, and he was truly ready. And on May 6, 1983, Daryl Strawberry made his big league day from there, it was literally up, up, and away. Strawberry became a force to reckon with, almost immediately with a towering height of 6'6", six six and weighing 190 pounds. He rocked the left-handed batting and throwing game, mainly held it down in right field. His debut might have been a bit shaky, with some strikeouts and a foul pop up, but he also showed off his skills by working a few walks and swiping a base late in the game. With his unique batting stance and that high leg kick, he quickly climbed up the Mets' ranks and even snagged the Rookie of the Year title in 1983 and the first of eight consecutive All-Star selections. Find Daryl Strawberry's story exciting? Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing stories from the world of baseball. Strawberry's seven years with the Mets saw the formation of a dynasty with the team finishing either first or second in the division every year. And happily ever after? Hmm, not quite. An infected Strawberry, the vices of the 80s. Yeah, everyone could tell Strawberry had skills, but his other behaviors ended up being his downfall. Daryl Strawberry hit his stride on the baseball diamond, but he also fell prey to the allure of the New York City lifestyle, leading him down a perilous path of cocaine experimentation. During his rookie season, Strawberry was introduced to illegal substances and stimulants by some Mets veterans who assured him that it was a common practice in the big leagues. Despite these off-field distractions, Strawberry delivered outstanding performances on the diamond. He imagined 108 hits, slugged 26 home runs, drove in 74 runs, and swiped 19 bases that same season. So it was all good, at least that for the meantime. The following season, under new coach Davey Johnson's leadership, the Mets went from last place to second place, and Strawberry was a big part of that turnaround. He was hitting those balls out of the park and drawing huge crowds in Shea Stadium. The attendance had more than doubled since his rookie year. Yeah, he developed some health issues and injuries, but he still had an impressive season and hit 29 home runs, earning yet another All-Star selection. However, in that 1984 season, Strawberry hopped on the amphetamine train, just like some of his Mets buddies. They thought it was the secret to an all-night partying and avoiding hangovers while still performing on the field. Little did Strawberry know these unhealthy vices were developing into something big. Strawberry's ego, on the other hand, was already well-developed. With all the fame and attention, he was reported to become cocky in the dressing room, and this strained his relationships with his teammates, who felt overshadowed. Not gonna lie, any player with anything less than Strawberry's baseballing talent couldn't have dragged it out for as long as he did. Bad locker room energy and substance abuse, but this dude still managed to keep being in the All-Star selections and was the National League home run leader in 1988 and the Silver Slugger Award winner twice between 1988 in 1990. Having already led the Mets to a World Series title in 1986, he had seemingly done it all in New York. So in 1990, he signed a massive $22.25 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers and returned home to LA. Daryl Strawberry always had his off-field problems, but his talents always seemed more profound. Would he keep escaping the consequences, or would fate catch up with him? Bittersweet Strawberry, later years. To keep it simple, Daryl's big money move to the Dodgers didn't end up being the fairy tale homecoming of a league icon as everyone hoped. Yeah, he had a great first season with the Dodgers, but nothing more. First the injuries, and like a tragedy soap opera, everything else followed. 
A messy divorce took its toll, and then the seeming rumors of substance abuse turned out to have more ground, resulting in him getting suspended from the MLB three times. He finally faced his addiction and went to the Betty Ford Clinic to get clean, but sadly, his time with the Dodgers came to an end after barely three seasons. One uneventful year with the San Francisco Giants followed in a return to New York, this time with the Yankees. After a year of suspension and some months with the St. Paul Saints of the Northern League, Darrell made his way back to the MLB in July 1996. He showed glimpses of the player everyone knew he could be while playing for the Yankees, including belting 11 home runs in a part-time role and helping his team win the World Series in 1996. Injuries hit again in 1997, and Strawberry played just 11 games before coming back in 1998 to shock everyone. Dude landed 24 home runs and once again helped the Yankees win the World Series in what was his first 100-game season since 1991. He still had it in him, but he never got to show it again. Abdominal cancer in 1999 and another full-year suspension after testing positive for cocaine in 2000 meant the end of Daryl's career. It might have been short-lived, but Daryl Strawberry at his peak remains one of the best the MLB has ever seen. If you enjoyed this video about how Daryl Strawberry shook the MLB world, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another baseball player whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there.